and prokaryotes, there are two types of gene regulation. And this one we're talking about right now is going to be trip tripoperon. And so basically, the binding polymerase binds to the promoter region and it basically continues across and transcribes from these genes in mRNA sequence. And this mRNA sequence then codes for polypeptides, which then make in tryptophan. And um, also, so in the, over here at the regulatory gene, it produces an mRNA sequence which codes for a trip repressor. And this trip repressor is normally inactive when it's first created but it becomes activated when tryptophan, the co-repressor, binds to it. And the only time it binds to it is when it detects there are high levels of tryptophan. And so it, when it binds to it, it's allosteric, so it changes its shape, and it becomes into this right here. And then this activated um, repressor goes and binds to the operator region, and basically hinders part of the from continuing transcribing from these genes in that mRNA sequence, which ultimately leads to no tryptophan production. However, once there is little, low levels of tryptophan and the body requires more, the tryptophan disassociates from the repressor and then this becomes on again. And also, the, this operon overall is called an repressible operon because as I said, it can, be, it can be turned on and off depending on the tryptophan levels. And also this is an example of negative regulation. Go. So here's another example of deregulation is lac operon. And the lac operon is described as both positive and, and negative regulation. With all, and it's also called the inducible operon because it's naturally off when can be turned on. And so original, um, naturally in its um, original state, there's an active repressor bind bounded to the operator which um, inhibits RNA polymerase from continuing transcription of these genes. And so when the cell detects that there's high levels of lactose, all lactose, the inducer comes and binds to the repressor and it makes it inactive, and it changes shape into this. And being inactive now, it allows RNA polymerase to bind to the promoter, and then continues transcription along the gene. And then after this transcription, the mRNA is created, which then codes for um, these um, enzymes, these galactosidase, which um, hydrolyzes uh, lactose into galactose and glucose. And permease is another one, and basically the function of this is that it's a, it allows um, la um, lactose into the cell membrane, and um, the function of this transactylase is still unknown. When now I'm going to talk about um, CAP, and basically, when there's high le when there's low levels of glucose, there's high levels of CAMP, and so with that, CAMP binds to the um, CAP, which makes it into its active form, and it changes shape, and it goes and binds to the upstream of the promoter region right here. And then this basically allows um, RNA polymerase, um, allows RNA polymerase to transcribe the genes faster and more efficiently, and then it leads to the production of these um, enzymes. However, when there's high levels of glucose, the, there's low levels of CAMP as a result. And so CAMP disassociates from the CAP, and they go back to the original position, and the repressor goes back, binding to the operator, and turns off the lac operon and waiting to be turned on again. In eukaryotes, mRNA has to be processed before it can leave the cell and leave the nucleus into the cytoplasm, and before it can before it can refine such process, there is the addition of a five cap and a poly A tail. And so, when it wants to be refined such process, it has to um, this lysosome comes, and it basically cuts out the introns and it splices together the exons. And where this happens is at the specific regions of the introns where small RNPs come, bind to the intron locations, and then they and then they cut out the introns and they splice together the exons. And once this happens, you're left with um, a more condensed version of the previous mRNA with only exons and no introns, and with the addition of a 5-cap and a poly A tail. This diagram represents eukaryotic gene expression, and basically what happens is that in here a signal comes and hits this um, cell, and it tells the chromatin to um, modification and unpacking basically, and either when you have um, histone acetylation, basically, you're adding acetyl groups to the chromatin, which basically unpacks it. So it allows RNA polymerase to bind to it easily and transcribe. What, what, however, if methyl, when methyl groups are added to the chromatin, it makes it more compact. So it's less likely transcription will occur. But in the event that acetylation happens, acetyl groups are added, RNA polymerase is, binds to the DNA and it starts transcription process where mRNA um, comes out with introns and exon sequences. And before it can leave, it, have, it has to have a, um, a poly a and 5 cap to help it get out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm because if not, it will be degraded. 
And so also the foreglows has to be processed, which means that the introns have to be cut out and the exons have to be spliced together. After this happens, it leaves the, nucle it leaves the nucleus and enters the cytoplasm, where here translation occurs and it encodes for specific polypeptides. After polypeptides, it goes through protein processing where it makes specific active proteins. And after this happens, it can either be transported to cellular destinations for specific, um, where the specific proteins needed, or it can degrade into smaller particles.